many people have been asking me if Bing and Bing Chat is going to change search forever and if, you know, if their blog is still going to be needed or whatever. And so I, I keep, I get so many emails just from concerned website owners say, stating that the informational websites are not going to be relevant. Uh, they're going to lose traffic with Bing and a whole lot of things. Now, Bing has not launched officially in Dubai, but I've had the opportunity to use Bing Chat. Now, let me tell you, Bing Chat is not revolutionary. It's an evolutionary step in the whole search engine game. Um, and there's, there's no reason for people to lose their sanity over it. And Bing or Microsoft that owns Bing recently posted a blog post about Bing search and they went into detail of how Bing search worked. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how Bing's chat search actually works and this is going to be important for two reasons the first being that if you moving forward Bing is definitely going to be a player so you want to be able to know how to rank in Bing despite Bing chat being uh, something that many people do not necessarily like because it's uh, pulling content from their website and presenting it as its own uh, and I'll go into that in into this video and why why Microsoft will need to address this moving forward and there's also the fact that um, you're going to receive more traffic from Bing and I've as of late I've been seeing a lot of my clients get more traffic from Bing and so now it has become increasingly more important that you know how to rank in Bing and uh, in this video I'm going to go into like how Bing search and Bing chat actually works um, this is going to be a short tour into how I think it works. Uh, I'll be referencing uh, Google's, uh, Microsoft's blog in this video as well. And I'll, I'll show you a demonstration that was also part of the blog and you can read the blog post. The link is in the description if you want to read it, but it doesn't go into much. And so before I go into it, please like the video, subscribe to the video. Also, there's a link in the description. If you're looking for someone to do SEO for you, just click the link, fill out the form. I also do consultations. So if you're an SEO company that needs a consultant, we have a few websites that you need help with. Or if you're, if you're doing your own SEO, I'll be happy to help. Now, Bing search is something that has many people, uh, yeah, people have lost their sanity over it. And I don't know why, because I have used Bing search, I have not found it to be revolutionary. I have not found it to be something that will replace writers. It will not replace tele It will not replace affiliate marketers. It's not going to replace people with medical knowledge. It's not going to replace any of that. It's not that good. At the moment, it's not that good. Now, I know I'm going to get many people sending me hate messages and stuff like that. There were going to be hate comments and yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with dealing it, but dealing with it. But the key word here is that at the moment, it's not that good. It might improve, but I doubt it might improve to the point where it will become something that you would not need a human being to do because this is after all an AI that's using a very outdated algorithm. This algorithm has been out for a really long time and it has since then been replaced by improved algorithms that are not are not, are not uh, in the public domain yet. The people are not use it because they're still not ready for the mainstream. So how does Bing search work? So two things. So when you type in a query into Bing, Bing shortens the query. So if you type in, let's say I want to travel and I want to travel to XYZ country for my vacation, as, it, as you see in the video and query in what Bing does is it's shortened that query. So what it's doing is it's taking that query, it's putting it against a database of ground information that's fed in by Bing. And it says, how does this query match up against all the existing queries in the database? And so it then picks out the most relevant query based on this long query that you typed in. It kind of shortens it and then it runs a Bing search. And so in niche, so what it's doing is actually running a Bing search for you for the most relevant uh, query. So once, this, once the search runs and it also then pulls up some information in its, in its chat window on the right. And so this is the most relevant information that Bing can find based on your query. Now, in my experience, it gets this wrong a lot of times. 
and so you need to redo it and in some in some cases it becomes very really irritating but the best part of it is that it's relevant this is all very uh this is all more relevant than you would find with google the information is a lot more relevant and it's a lot more fresh as compared to what uh, microsoft used to do in the past and so bing search was really dated in the past and a lot of the results were from uh, months ago sometimes and so uh, if you type in a query about the latest uh february 2020 product review update by google it will actually give you that information so back to how this works so once you've typed in a query it shortens the query based on its existing database of queries and then pulls up the most relevant results it also then pulls up information from those queries and it shows you in the chat window on the right so once that's done you can then chat with uh, bing and then bing will then pull up more information and once Bing pulls up more information and it kind of helps you, uh, you're done with it. Now, Microsoft has limited the number of chats you can have with Bing to five uh, chats because according to Microsoft, if you do this, if you do more than five, then, Google, then Bing kind of loses its track and it kind of goes off track and it, it doesn't do as well. And so that's a problem. That's it's that's some. Um, bigger problem than Microsoft would like to acknowledge because it's a chat it's a conversational chatbot and if you can't have more than five rounds of a conversation with a chatbot then it's not a chatbot so at some point you have to realize that um, the second thing that is Microsoft is running into and this is going to be a problem moving forward is that Microsoft will have to then if it's not referencing these links from where uh, chat GPT is pulling this information Microsoft will have to then take responsibility that it is a publisher. So Microsoft will have to be governed by the rules that govern every other publisher, including us. Now, Microsoft has said that, you know, it wants people to use inclusive languages and the chatbot is designed to be inclusive and everything. And all of that I agree with. But once you have something that's filtering information and you're typing in a query, you're shortening it, putting it against a database of queries up to that point that's fine when Bing starts presenting this information as its own information and in some instances even referencing itself that is when you know Bing becomes a publisher and it's not really um, it's not really a search engine and I think this is something that Microsoft will run into uh, this is a problem for Microsoft moving forward uh, and there's going to be a many class action lawsuits because then you know, even if it's just AI generating this, AI is pulling this information from other people's content. So it's just high tech plagiarism. Uh, and then, you know, just being putting its own, um, its own twist on it. And as a consequence is what's happening is that real publishers are, are, are losing traffic and they're losing visitors because of it. And so then if Bing is a publisher, then Bing will have to be governed by the rules of publishing in the United States and Canada and North America and other parts of Europe, wherever Bing is uh, active and this chatbot is, 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 is activated. So I see a lot of problems for Bing and its chatbot, but as you can see, so far so good. I think Microsoft is on the right track, but they've got a lot of problems moving forward. And so uh, if you've been thinking this is all, all revolutionary and stuff, I probably have set your mind at ease. Your, jobs if you're an seo or if you write content it's not going anywhere and if you just sit down and you just you know copy and paste content from other people's websites it is pretty plagiarism regardless of how you look at it so i hope you guys learned something today and like the video if you do please leave a like if you've subscribed so thank you for subscribing if you have not please hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video